Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if you are brand new. Today we are going to be talking about, let me get it, Tears of the Kingdom and whether I think it's worth it. And I'm also going to be comparing the two, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and really kind of break it down for you on the improvements and the differences uh, between the two. There are a ton of differences. This isn't really, you know, what game you should buy. I feel like it's a pretty clear-cut answer, but kind of going over, you know, is this game worth it? So at the time of this recording, I have been playing this a lot. I don't know how many hours exactly, but I am not done the game yet. But I feel like I've played enough to kind of, you know, tell you a little bit about the differences and whether or not you should buy it or, you know, whether or not you're on the fence. You played Breath of the Wild. Should you upgrade to the sequel? Let's talk about it. And I will say, if you're watching this pre-launch of Tears of the Kingdom, there will be spoilers in here. Not story, of course, but just gameplay and things that necessarily haven't been officially announced by Nintendo. So if you're watching this in the future, how does it feel? How does it feel playing Tears of the Kingdom? Oh, you're, oh, you're stuck on that one puzzle. So what you have to do is you have to fuse the balloon to the platform and then you have to put the fire emitter and then you go like all the way up. I, yeah, I like that part too. That was a good, oh, sorry. Um, I'm in a review. All right. So let's talk Tears of the Kingdom and what it has done differently than Breath of the Wild. And I feel like the number one thing has to be the improvement on the map. That is, I think the main thing. Powers aside, story aside, I think the map and the world that you're exploring has seen sort of the biggest glow up, as they say. Uh, the map has literally increased by two and a half its original size from Breath of the Wild. And oh, by the way, Breath of the Wild, very impressive map, um, huge open world, one of the biggest that I've played. So how do they do that in Tears of the Kingdom? Well, Tears of the Kingdom has the base layer. It uses the same map as Breath of the Wild, if you didn't know, but it also has two additional layers. So you can now go to the sky, it has a lot of verticality in this game. There are sky islands. Um, there are different, you know, islands in the sky that you could just fly to and explore. And although it doesn't take up a lot of the map, there are, you know, a decent amount of sky islands you're going to want to go to, and also things that aren't sky islands. I'll let you explore those, but basically we saw them in the trailer. They kind of looked like those Death Star things. You can fly to them and there's something inside. But the bigger part that Nintendo really hasn't been sharing with us is the depths or the underground of Tears of the Kingdom. Now, to, to give it to you straight, the depths, which is, you know, obviously the, the layer below the base layer, is as big as the base layer. And this is sort of spooky. It's pretty dark down there. You have to illuminate and uh, find your way. There's a bunch of unique enemies. There are some things to do down there. I wouldn't say there's a crazy amount of things to do down there, but you're definitely gonna want to explore down there. And like I said, it basically, it doubles the map, just that alone. And that's a big deal. You know, playing Breath of the Wilds and going to something that uses the same map, you're like, well, why do I want to upgrade and, and play this new game? The whole map has also been updated. Um, towns that you loved are now updated. Places on the map might not be there anymore. And I don't want to spoil any of the towns, but each of the towns that I've been to is greatly updated. You will see characters that you met in Breath of the Wild and they might be older, they might have new story, like they remember you too, which is really cool. So the towns, the landmarks, they've all changed. The other big difference from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom is of course the powers. Now in Breath of the Wild, you had four main powers, um, you know, the magnesis, you can do the ice blocks in the water. Those no longer exist sort of in Tears of the Kingdom. So Tears of the Kingdom, you have four brand new powers, Spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. But you can acquire companions in this game. So basically, uh, when you when you finish the dungeons, you are awarded a companion. And those companions give you extra powers, sort of like the powers that you had in Breath of the Wild. So for example, for beating uh, one of the dungeons, you get a companion that can shoot gusts of wind, sort of like... Rivali's Gale in Breath of the Wild, but it's sort of like a newer version. Rivali's Gale, you go up 
Um, and in this game, the, the gust sends you forward. So it's a little different. Um, but I want to say this, and I haven't really heard a lot of people talking about this. The new powers that you have in the game and the fact that the old powers are gone makes traversing the old map new again. And, you know, I, I feel like I re relied a lot on the powers of the past game to kind of get around the map. I don't have those anymore. So yeah, Nintendo knows that and they've actually added more platforms to make it a little bit easier to uh, to go around the world. Now, something I wanna talk about in terms of difficulty between the two, I can't hold those up straight. The difficulty between the two, I feel like Tears of the Kingdom is a tougher game. I, I don't know, Tears of the Kingdom really makes you experiment with weapons, especially. There is a brand new fusing mechanic in Tears of the Kingdom, which really makes you sort of try out different weapon combinations and come up with more clever ways to defeat enemies. Breath of the Wild was very linear in the fact that there weren't a lot of enemy types and we pretty much all used bomb arrows or, you know, the, the stronger weapons in the game. Whereas Tears of the Kingdom, the enemies are stronger, the enemies have stronger weapons and you don't have as strong of weapons and you kind of have to make your own. So I think that's where the difficulty comes in, but if you're, if you're thinking like, oh my God, Tears of the Kingdom, it sounds so difficult. It is, but it's kind of all based on your creativity in a way. Now, as far as the story in both of these games, I think they're both very strong. Breath of the Wild, you kind of have to search more for the story, where in Tears of the Kingdom, it's kind of given to you. Um, there's a lot more cinematic cutscene moments in Tears of the Kingdom. And I feel like Breath of the Wild, one of, one of the things I disliked about it was there weren't as many cinematic sort of voice acted scenes and Tears of the Kingdom, you know, takes that problem and, and fixes it by adding a little bit more story in there. So if you are sort of a Zelda lore type person, I think Tears of the Kingdom is probably your pick. Now it's worth noting that uh, Breath of the Wild was made for the Wii U, which was the console before the Switch. And this game is especially made for the Nintendo Switch. It looks a lot crisper. It looks a little bit more optimized and the game itself looks very similar graphics. They're using the same engine, same map and everything. But I do think Tears of the Kingdom has a slight edge. You'll notice things like weather effects, water effects, I think are a lot cleaner, a lot crisper in Tears of the Kingdom. I don't think it's a deal breaker either way, but the graphics have definitely improved. I could go on and on, you know, the, the things that I like more about Tears of the Kingdom, but I don't want to discount what Breath of the Wild did. I feel like if you are new to the Zelda franchise and you're thinking, can I just play Tears of the Kingdom? You can, but I feel like you will miss out on a lot by not playing Breath of the Wild. Like I said, there's constant references to the game. Uh, the characters in Breath of the Wild are, you know, new and reimagined in Tears of the Kingdom. And I feel like you'll lose those subtle callbacks that Nintendo has kind of sprinkled in Tears of the Kingdom giving you a better experience in Breath of the Wild. I really do think that you should play it the first game or at least go online and watch some of the cutscenes. Now, a little bit uh, more about gameplay. Breath of the Wild, you can collect these things called Koroks. There's 900 of them. There's also 120 shrines. And there's also four main dungeons plus the last boss, which is a ton of content. Tears of the Kingdom kind of ramps that up. It's not known how many Koroks there are, but there are at least nine, some people are saying 900, some people are saying 1,200, 1,500, I don't know what the number is, but I don't think there's less than 900 is basically what I'm saying. There's also 150 shrines and there are 400 new caves, which are basically just random, they're random. None of them are the same and there are unique enemies in there and there are unique collectibles in there. So it's just more gameplay. In addition, there are dungeons, which are pretty much like the Divine Beasts in Breath of the Wild, just themed and a little bit better. But I think overall with the Sky Islands, with the three layers of map, I think you're getting more gameplay out of Tears of the Kingdom, which makes it a better buy overall. It is worth noting that Tears of the Kingdom retails for $69.99, Breath of the Wild retails for $59.99. I really don't think price matters in, in this, like, I don't think you're going to be bothered to pay an extra $10 for a game this size. Um, gaming is going in, in that way anyway. PS5, Series X games, uh, they're all going up. They're all, you know, base 70 games, sports games or even 70. So 
you know, in terms of pricing, really can't comment on it. They're both very much worth the value. It's also worth noting at the time of this recording, Breath of the Wild does have DLC and Tears of the Kingdom doesn't, but we can all pretty much assume that Tears of the Kingdom will get some sort of paid DLC, some big expansion for this game, but just wanted to throw that out there. So the big question, is this game worth it? And is this game worth it if you have Breath of the Wild? And I do think it's a clear yes. I think Tears of the Kingdom improves on Breath of the Wild in every single way. I really do. Soundtrack is better. Visuals got a little bit of an upgrade. There's more gameplay. The story's deeper. Characters, I think, are better in this game. The powers, you can go either way on that. I do I do miss some of the Breath of the Wild powers, but Tears of the Kingdom powers are very cool. There's a lot more creativity in Tears of the Kingdom. The one thing I think Breath of the Wild nails that Tears of the Kingdom kind of gets right is just the feeling of being alone and the feeling of just exploring a world and kind of having sort of an uneasy feeling. I feel like Breath of the Wild just gave me that feeling of being alone or, you know, something really, really bad just happened and I'm kind of exploring, you know, the remnants of it. But Tears of the Kingdom does give me that feeling, but just not as not as impactful as, as Breath of the Wild. So the clear winner is Tears of the Kingdom. I don't want to discount Breath of the Wild, though. It is my number two game of all time yet. Tears of the Kingdom, I haven't ranked yet just because I haven't completed it. Uh, Skyrim is number one, if you, were, if you were wondering. But yeah, these are both masterpieces. I think, you know, like I said, Tears of the Kingdom gets the edge in pretty much every single way. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on both games if you've played them. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. They're both great. You have nothing to worry about. They're amazing.